Samsung typically holds about three to five Galaxy Unpacked events every year, and the first one of 2023 is upon us. Today, the company is unveiling the Galaxy S23 series as well as new laptops in a line called the Galaxy Book 3. Now, the Galaxy S23 series is the latest version of the company's mainstream single screen non foldy smartphone, and it comprises the S23, the S23 Plus, and the S23 Ultra. Longtime fans of Samsung may remember that the Ultra model of the S series is now the version with a pen in it, taken over from the Note series in the past. As his name suggests, this is the highest powered mainstream flagship of the S23 line. Now we're gonna focus on that for this video. If you wanna find out more about the S23 and the S23 Plus, check out our other hands-on video on our channel. Now this is not only the most high spec phone, but also the biggest phone. This is a 6.8 inch device. On first glance, it doesn't look like a lot has changed. It's still got that mostly rectangular, almost blockish look, but look closer and you'll see some differences. For one thing, the sides of the screen that are usually curved on the Ultra model are slightly less curved this time. It's hard to, for me to tell without a side-by-side -side comparison, but Samsung did say it's refined the design here to give you more usable screen space so the S Pen can write on it more without compromising that sort of curved look that adds a more premium feel to the Ultra. Compare that to the flat screens of the S23 and the S23 Plus and you will see that it does differentiate the different classes of devices. Something else that is also less obvious to the naked eye is that Samsung uses different materials in the S23 Ultra compared to the S22 Ultra. It's covered in Victus 2 Gorilla Glass, which is not only durable, but also comprises some recycled material in it. But what is immediately obvious are the new color options for the S23 line. We've got here the typical Phantom Black, Cream, Lavender, and Green, which is this year's new signature color. Again, all these touches are very subtle. Still got the same 120 hertz refresh rate, the same QHD resolution. You've also just got a bit more of peak brightness. In fact, at outdoor peak brightness, it'll get up to 1750 nits. In general use, when you're not using it blasted on full mode, it gets up to 1200 nits. What is slightly different is the 12 megapixel front camera that's embedded in this display. Now, this might seem like a downgrade from the 40 megapixel sensor on the S22 Ultra here, but the S23 Ultra actually uses a new sensor that is slightly bigger and therefore lets in more light for clearer and brighter pictures. Now this change here isn't unique to the S23 Ultra. In fact, the S23 and the S23 Plus also get the same selfie camera update, but for those other two phones, that's more of an upgrade because they used to be 10 megapixel cameras. And it can also be capable now of recognizing two faces and keeping them autofocused. It's also using dual pixel autofocus like previous generations as well. I tried uh, testing this OIS or this stabilization feature out, taking a selfie with me and our video producer, Joelle, and the pictures did come out clear. I'm not going to say this was a great test of this feature. It's something that we will have to wait till we're able to review it in the real world to know how effective it is. For now, sure it works. The biggest change here, and probably the highlight of the entire S23 series, is the S23 Ultra's 200 megapixel main rear camera. The rumors were true. Thanks to a new isocell sensor that Samsung itself launched in January, the S23 Ultra is capable of taking super sharp pictures. However, of course, it doesn't default to that resolution, otherwise it would clog up a lot of space on your phones. It actually uses binning to produce 12 megapixel pictures with larger pixels. So during our little hands-on at Samsung's event, we used the S23 Ultra's camera to shoot at a variety of resolutions. We shot at 50 megapixels, 200 megapixels, and the base 12 megapixels. And I found that somehow the binned pictures at 12 megapixels produced the best and most clear images of lemons, especially at a close-up. When we zoomed in to see the lemon's skin, we were most able to make out individual pits and even a strand of hair in the 12 megapixel photo, whereas the 200 megapixel shot was just kind of yellow. 
Now that 200 megapixel camera also allows for support of 8K video recording at up to 30 frames per second. We tested this briefly, but I can't judge the quality of that yet. We will want to see it on a different monitor for ourselves. The rest of the camera array on the S23 Ultra includes the regular pair of 10 megapixel telephoto lenses that we saw on the S22 Ultra, as well as an ultra wide angle camera that's 12 megapixels sharp. And there is also a laser autofocus included. Samsung also says it's improved the low light and nighttime performance of its cameras, but this isn't something we were able to test in the middle of the day at our really brightly lit demo area. In fact, there were a lot of things I couldn't test out at our brief hands-on, including the battery life, although it is nice to see that there is still a 5000 mAh battery on the Ultra. The phone is powered by a custom version of Qualcomm's Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 processor, and it's called the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 for Galaxy. I was, however, able to test out some software features. Now, the S23 series will ship with One UI 5.1. Now, at our demo, we were able to test parts of it on the S23s and some parts of it on the S23 Ultra, and I'm gonna tell you about them just as if they were the same. A lot of One UI 5.1 feels very familiar. It feels like a combination of iOS 16 features as well as Android 13's Material U. For example, we already knew Material U was coming to One UI, but this time around, Samsung was able to add more customization options. For example, in the wallpaper section, you can now choose from more color palettes when the system is generating them from the wallpaper of your choosing. One UI 5.1 also brings some lock screen customization features, which are very, very similar to the iOS 16 version. You can long press on the lock screen to change up the clock widget, change up its font, its color, its size, and you can also pick the status indicator icons below the clock widget. But Samsung has added an additional field here for you to leave a message like contact information, for example, just in case your phone is lost and picked up by a stranger and you pray that they're kind. Another thing that should feel very familiar to iOS 16 users is the new widget options on One UI 5.1. For example, the smart suggestions widget, which should take up your whole row on your screen, We'll show you not only the most recently used apps, but if you've been using it for long enough, can even suggest apps that you wanna launch at this time of day or based on your behavior, suggest actions. So say you message your mom at 5 p.m. every night, come 5 p.m. on Friday evening and you're out having fun, it'll be like, maybe you wanna message your mom. That's in theory anyway. This isn't something that I saw for myself, but probably how Samsung wants it to work. That's also kind of how Apple's version works. Another feature I found eerily familiar to Apple is something that Samsung calls Image Clipper. On the S23 Ultra, I used an S Pen to use this, but you can also use your fingers on One UI 5.1 on the S23 or the S23 Plus. By long pressing on the subject in a picture in the gallery app, you can tell the system to recognize it and kind of cut out around it, and then you can drag and drop it to other apps like a message with your friends, for example. Well, what's different about the version on Samsung's One UI 5.1 is that because the S23 Ultra supports a split screen interface, you can actually drag and drop it between apps with greater ease. In our brief time with this feature, I will say that the object recognition is about the same in terms of accuracy. Sometimes it doesn't recognize, say, a phone on a table and doesn't actually cut out the rectangle. But when it was trying to pull me out of the background, it did so pretty well. I wish it identified my hair a little bit better and didn't give me jagged outlines for a silhouette, but it did the job. Also, these demo samples weren't final versions of the S23 Ultra, so there may be some improvement that Samsung could be doing before these phones actually launch. Finally, One UI 5.1 also brings something called modes and routines. Modes is very straightforward and once again, very similar to focus modes on iOS. So for our demo, we try to set it so that when I launch the exercise mode, I will play music. If it were my real phone, for example, I would say in exercise mode, turn on my heart rate tracker, turn on my activity log, and then put on a really baller video. It was just for demo purposes, we did one thing. We said, turn on YouTube to play music. It wasn't very useful in the moment at the hands-on. I couldn't really think of many ways I would use this feature, but just as you would with focus mode, you can also block certain apps from disturbing you during your work mode, for example, or your study mode. And you can also whitelist so you can allow certain apps to get through to you during those times of focus. 
I'm more intrigued by the routines part of this new feature. It's really like a mild programming option that allows you to set triggers and behaviors. So it's basically if this, then that. So set a condition to be met. In our demo's case, if airplane mode is turned on, then you can have your phone do something. And in this demo's case, change it to a wallpaper of me. Because when I'm in an airplane, I look, like to look at me. And when I turned on airplane mode on the S23 Ultra, it did work. There was some lag, there was some lag, which I hesitate to attribute to the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 and more to the fact that these were non-final phones, but it did work. So other than all of that, really not much else has changed on the S23 Ultra. You've still got the S Pen. It still feels really good to write with. It still slots onto the bottom left of the phone. It's not changed from the one on the S22 Ultra. The other nice thing to note is that none of the pricing has changed either. Samsung hasn't increased the price of the S23 line. However, there is a new one terabyte storage option available if you're buying the S23 Ultra. If you're already itching to buy yourself a new S23 Ultra, make sure you go to Engadget.com for all the details on where to score the best deals on them, as well as how to pre-order one phone for yourself. And make sure you stay tuned for our full review of the devices before you go spending your money though. So for all of that information, make sure you stay tuned to Engadget. And until next time, keep airplane mode off.